Something that I've noticed commonly causes confusion in integration is the question of how we handle the integration limits on a definite integral when we're performing a substitution to evaluate the integral. Here I want to show you what we'll do by using a couple of examples. I'll start with a fairly simple one. The integral of 2x over x squared plus 1 evaluated between integration limits 1 up to 3. On looking at the integrand here we should immediately notice that the numerator 2x is exactly the derivative of the denominator x squared plus 1. That means that we can make a substitution u to be equal to the denominator x squared plus 1. For the moment let's forget the limits 1 to 3 and just do this as an indefinite integral. So I make the substitution u equals x squared plus 1 with the result that du is the same as 2x dx. So here comparing u equals x squared plus 1 and du equals 2x dx with what I see in my integral I see u in the denominator and du as the numerator. That means that we can rewrite our integral in the form 1 over u du to be integrated. This is a well-known standard indefinite integral and we end up with the log of u, strictly speaking the absolute value of u. As for the moment it's an indefinite integral I've also added on the c. Now we need to replace the u with its expression in terms of x. That's just x squared plus 1. And now since x squared plus 1 is a positive quantity for any value of x we like to put in, we can just drop the absolute value in this particular example. All of this has been an evaluation of an indefinite integral so far. But what about that definite integral that we wrote down before? It was the same integrand, but it had integration limits from 1 to 3. We now need to put those in. There in red is the indefinite version and from that we can write down the definite version of the integral from 1 to 3. Since the process of putting in the limits will involve subtraction that means that the c will disappear as usual. All we now have to do is substitute the 3, substitute the 1 and then subtract the two results. So we get log of 3 squared plus 1, that's log of 10, minus log of 1 squared plus 1 that's log of 2. And then at the end to tidy up we could use the rules of logs and say that as that's a difference of logs we could instead take a quotient inside. So that will be 10 over 2 which is log 5. That's all fine as far as it goes but I'd rather show you a more efficient way of doing this in which we maintain the definite integral all along. Let's start again. There's the integral we want to evaluate. The substitution is going to be exactly the same as before, u equals x squared plus 1, along with the same result for du that we had before. Now we're going to write next an integral involving u. An integral involving u should not have values for x on it. It should have values for u. So what we need to do is to take those values 1 and 3 and find out what they tell us about the value of u. When x is 1, u is 1 squared plus 1. That comes to 2. Similarly, when x is 3, u is 3 squared plus 1. That comes to 9 plus 1, which is 10. So now, when we do our substitution and have an integral involving only u, the appropriate limits on the integral are no longer 1 and 3, but rather 2 and 10. Let's write that integral out now. The advantage we've obtained in doing this is that we can now integrate the 1 over u du and get log u and we no longer have to make substitutions for x values. We've got the u values appropriate to this integral. They're sitting on the integral already, 2 to 10. So let's do that. Since 2 and 10 are both positive, I've also realized that I can leave off the absolute value immediately. If one of those values had been negative, then I should have included an absolute value of u there in the log. OK, so now all we have to do is substitute the limits. We get log 10 minus log 2. 
which is just log 5 again, the same as before. I feel this is a better and more efficient method of, of presenting things. It allows us to stick with definite integrals all the way along. So now I'm going to do another slightly more complicated one using this method rather than the first method. Let's have a look at this one. Here we see a quadratic function to a high power, power 5. We also see a linear function sitting next to it outside. Have a think about differentiating that quadratic function for a moment. What would you get? You'd get 2x plus 3. Now we're not seeing 2x plus 3 outside, but 4x plus 6 is exactly double that, isn't it? It's two lots of 2x plus 3. So that's telling us that we can get away with the substitution here again. I'm going to choose u to be the quadratic function. So now we need to differentiate the u. Let's write down du by dx. Then cross multiply the dx up to the top right. Notice that in doing that I should put brackets around the 2x plus 3. Can you see that if I double that I will get 4x plus 6 dx? But of course that means that on the left I'll have 2 times du. Well now we can write out the integrand entirely in terms of u. But we still need to deal with those integration limits 0 to 1. Let's find out the consequences for u when x is 0 or when x is 1. We just substitute the appropriate values for x into the formula for u. So for x equals 0, we end up with u equals negative 1. For x equals 1, we end up with u equals 3. So now, armed with all that information, we can write out the definite integral entirely in terms of u and its values on the integral. There's the original x integral. Now the new limits are no longer going to be 0 to 1, but are going to be negative 1 to 3. The quadratic object, x squared plus 3x minus 1, is now just u, so that's u to the fifth. And finally, the 4x plus 6 dx was twice du. So I can put on the du, and I'll put the 2 at the front. That integral is now easy to do. It's a sixth u to the sixth times 2. And the integration limits are those appropriate for u. That's negative 1 to 3. So let's finish by evaluating it. 2 divided by 6 is a third, and the rest is just a matter of putting in the top and bottom limits and subtracting. Now negative 1 to an even power, namely 6, is just going to be 1. 3 to the 6th happens to be 729. So there's our answer. And here we did not have to go back to substituting x's. We could evaluate the integral entirely using u's and the values of u. I'm going to stop there.